So I'm going to talk about a way of, of solving games, an algorithm to actually play games in a smart way. Uh, it's called the Minimax algorithm. And uh, first I want to introduce this by saying that the games that this works in are going to be mostly, uh, they're going to be competitive games, uh, usually zero-sum, but they don't have to be zero-sum. A zero-sum game is basically uh, a game in which one player wins and then the other player loses. And whatever one player wins, the other player loses. Okay? So, for example, chess, where you win everything and the other player wins nothing. Or if you win, if, if, uh, if there's a tie, basically you win half, the other player wins half. Right? Um, another zero-sum game is tic-tac-toe, whether, you know, if you win, the other person loses. Whatever you win, the other person loses. Uh, I'm going to talk about games that have perfect information, meaning that the players know the results of all the previous moves, okay? If you know the results of all the previous moves, there's going to be b one best way to play for each player. It might not win you the game, but given a board, say it's a board game, Given a board in which you know everything that's been going on so far, there's usually one best move or several best moves that are more likely to get you to win the game. But of course, say for example in chess, there's so many ways to win the game as well as you know the same move can also uh, can also drive you to lose the game. But you will you have a strategy. Uh, I'm not going to talk about games with imperfect information in which the players do not know all the previous moves. So, for example, uh, um, rock, paper, scissors, right? So, because you both play at the same time, you don't know what the other player is thinking. Um, and then I'm going to... These games usually will have simple states for representation, okay? So they're not going to be like Robo Soccer, where robots play soccer, okay? They're going to be simpler games where the states are well-known, discrete uh, for now. Before uh, I go into more detail of the algorithms, let's define some terminology in the functions. So I'm going to call S0. It's going to be the initial state. Player of S, this is going to be a function. S is going to be a state, and the player of S will return the player at that state. So remember, if, if state is, say, tic-tac-toe, if the state is a game like this, okay, Player, the player at this state will be O, because O is the player that needs to put something here, right? Now, actions of S will be the possible moves from state S. So from this state, what are the other successors? What are the other actions that you can do? You can put a circle here, 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 etc. Result of S and A is the state that results from being in, in a state S and applying action a. Okay, so if the action is to put a circle here, the result of this state putting a circle here is this other state where the tic-tac-toe board now has, you know, two symbols. Terminal S returns true if S is a terminal state. So for example, this state here, I don't know, there, this state here is terminal because the game's been won. Right? So that would be a terminal state. And this, if, if I say terminal S, where S is this state over here, then it should return true. And utility SP is the objective function in state S for player P. So basically for uh, the circle, what would be the objective function of playing here, right? So what's the utility of this state for the circle? Well, it's, you know, one. It's, it's won the game. It's very, it's very, the objective function has a very high value, right? And it might have intermediate values if you haven't won or lost the game. So this is the utility for this player, the utility of this state S for this player P. So these are going to be some terminology that we're going to be um, uh, talking about. Now, before we go into the algorithm, um, we need to represent the, the game. Uh, we need a representation of the game that we can work with in a computer. So, we're going to say the, the game, uh, we talked about in other videos about uh, searching for trees and searching in games, but those were on um, searching for trees. And 
and are going to algorithms that go towards a goal. Now, here the game not only needs to find the best way to get to a goal, but also has to take into consideration what the other player has to say, right? So the other player might deviate the path, the, the best path to a goal. So let's think of two players, Max and Min. These are going to be two players playing together, and then I'm going to illustrate the algorithm with these two players. Now, if I have actions in a, any given state, S, and I have the result of, the, of those, uh, of those uh, actions on state S, that will basically start defining a game tree, right? So I have a state here, state, and then I have several actions that can be played with that state, and the result of, say, this action A on this state is going to be a different board, a different state, right? And you can see how this will start creating a game tree. So in a game tree, for example, for tic-tac-toe, there's less than nine factorial terminal nodes, okay? And that's a lot of nodes. In chess, there's over 10 to the 40th. So basically, this idea that of, of the game tree is mostly theoretically, but it serves as a foundation for a lot of uh, useful algorithms. Just as a means of example, let's look at the tic-tac-toe, uh, a, a partial tic-tac-toe game tree with players max and min. Now, this max and min are placed next to whose turn is it, okay? So at this level of the tree, when the board is empty, it's max's turn, who's playing x's. Whatever max's play, wherever, uh, whatever this player puts the x, now it's min's turn. So what is min going to do with this board, with this board, with this board, etc. Now, say Min did this, puts a circle here. Now it's Max's turn. What is Max is going to, Max going to do with this, this or this board? Whatever Max does. So, for example, it puts an X here. Now it's Min's turn. What is Min going to do with this? And so on and so forth until you get to a terminal state. So, for example, here, this is the utility for Max. Okay, utility for Max. The utility for Max here is negative one because it lost to Min. The utility for max here is zero because uh, there was a tie. And the utility for max in this state, for example, is plus one because max won. Okay? So this is what a, a, a tree would look like. But remember, the tic tac toe tree has thousands of nodes. Okay? All right. So how do we, how does tic tac toe in this case, how does max and min know how to play? What's the best? move at any given point in time. Well, because the, the nodes for tic-tac-toe are a lot, okay, we're going to simplify this with a two-ply game. Two-ply means two turns, okay? Just one turn each. So, basically, let's have this game where max starts and all the nodes for max are going to have this triangle, okay? And then min plays again, and all the, the downward triangle is going to be Min's turn. Okay. Now, so for example, we're here and in the first uh, step, Max plays, right, by taking A1 as an action to play, right? Then Min's going to find itself in B and say, well, what do I do? Of course, Min, Min wants to win, right? These are the utilities for Max of all the, um, of all the terminal nodes. So obviously, Right? If max plays into A1, min would want to minimize its losses, right? Hence the name. Uh, it want to minimize, I'm sorry, minimize its losses and want to minimize max's win. Okay? So min would probably take action B1, which gives it 3, right? As opposed to whatever else max could have won. Uh, if max takes action 3, for example, if max were to take this action, it would be here. And now it's Min's turn. Min would take then action D3, right? Which ends the game and with only two for Max. So obviously for Max it's more convenient to play action one because the least that it can end up with is three, right? It is now good to play action two because then in Min's turn, Min can also choose an action like C1 and leaving two for Max. Max wants to maximize its win. Min wants to minimize that that utility for max. Okay, that's the idea. So this whole process that we talked about 
how, is the, how can we do this with an algorithm? So the basic algorithm that I'm going to talk about is the minimax. And the idea of minimax is to pick the, the best next move against your best move. That's the idea. And the minimax, what it does is it adds value to each intermediate node. Okay? So for example, here max says the maximum I can win is 3. Right? And the best action is going to be the one that has the highest value, 3. Right? So this intermediate values will help max decide what to do and in turn will help min what to do. And the way we compute these values is by this recursive algorithm, minimax of s. Minimax of s will test. If the node s is a terminal node, you will just return the utility. If the player of the node is max, then you will return the maximum for all possible actions of the minimaxes of the results of those actions. Okay? And if the player is min, it's the same thing. You're going to return the minimum of the minimax of the result of, of that state with all possible actions. So let's, let's look at an example here. So here's a, the tree. We know the, the utilities of each finishing board or each finishing state. And we're going to compute the minimax for this tree. So first we start with node A. Note it's Max's turn. So what, this is S, right? This is the beginning. This, is, this will be S. So let's look at the minimax of A in this case. Well, is A a terminal node? No, right? OK, then is the player of S max? Yes. Then return the maximum for all actions for A1, A2, and A3. For all these actions, return the minimax of the result of being in state S and applying these actions. So basically, return the minimax, return the maximum of the minimax of this guy, this guy, and this guy. So I want the maximum of these three minimaxes. Okay? All right, but as you can see, well, what's the maximum of this minimax? Well, we have to compute the minimax of this guy. Right? So how do we compute the minimax of B in this case? Well, let's look at this. Is B a terminal node? No. It's the player of B max? No. It's the player of B min? Yes. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the minimum of the minimaxes of the result of all the actions taken on that state. So for each of these actions, B1, B2, B3, Okay, from state B, I'm going to end up here. And I need the minimax of all these guys. Once I get the minimax of all those people, then I'm going to get the minimum value of these. Okay, all right, let's compute the minimax of this node here, right? Is this a terminal node? Yes, then return the utility. So the minimax of this guy is 3. Let's compute the minimax of this other guy. This guy is a terminal node, therefore just return its utility, 12. And then the same thing with this one, and the minimax is going to be the utility, which is 8. Remember, I'm trying to compute the minimum of these three minimaxes here, right? So the minimum of these three minimaxes is 3. So I'm going to put a little 3 here. Okay, so I've computed now the minimax of B. Now I need to compute the minimax of C and the minimax of D in order to then get the maximum of those values, right? And the maximum of those values is going to give me the minimax of A. So as you can see, as you go, as you go further, right, you explore depth first, but as you explore, this is a recursive algorithm, meaning after you finish and you've gone all the way down to the tree, then you can backtrack and put the values in the corresponding nodes. So we've discussed the minimax for this one is 3. Now remember, we were computing the minimax of S, which is the maximum of all the minimaxes of these guys. Okay? We computed the minimax of this guy, which was the minimum of these guys. So now we need to compute the minimax of C. 
what's the minimax of C? Well, is C a terminal node? No. Is the player of, of C max? No. Is the player of C min? Yes. Remember, this is min. So the player of C is min. So I'm going to get the minimum of the minimax of the successor nodes. So I'm going to get the minimum of these minimaxes. And the minimum of these minimaxes is 2. We can see that. I mean, they're all terminal nodes, so they will just return its utility. So the minimax of this one is 2, 4, and 6, and the minimum of these three is 2. And then the same thing with D. The minimax here is 2 as well. Okay? Now, I did the minimax of these nodes, of these nodes. Now I need the minimax of this. Remember, this was the maximum of this layer here, which is 3. What this says the tree is that, oh, it's now max turn, and the maximum that it can get is 3. So let's go to an action that gets me 3. It goes here. Now it's min's turn, and min's turn is going to try to minimize these losses by going to the one that has the minimum, right, which is 3. So basically this value here tells max what is the maximum uh, or, or what is the maximum it can win, right? Or what is the best utility it can have if both players are playing optimally. Just in pseudocode uh, to implement this algorithm, it's uh, three functions. The first one is um, min value. Basically, if the terminal is, if the state is a terminal, return the utility. Otherwise, return return the maximum value. Uh, return sorry, return the minimum value. Here, for the max value, it's the same thing, just return the minimum value, and then the minimax state, which wants to get the max value of that state, which in turn will call alternatively min and max. You can analyze this source code and see that it matches our function minimax of s. Little discussion. Uh, minimax is a complete depth first exploration. And uh, the, if the depth of the tree is m, right, so 3, 17, whatever, with b legal moves on average, right, the, the running time of this algorithm the, it's, it's in the order of b to the m. So it could be a lot. And the space that we need to store this in memory is b times m. So now, for example, in chess, m is about 35. So there's about 35 moves, more or less, you know, a, a game of chess ends. Uh, on average, on average, the amount of moves that I can make at any, at any legal, the amount of legal moves at any state, at any step, the average is between 50 and 100. So for all practical purposes, this is a very, um, very impractical, but it's the base for a lot of algorithms. Perhaps we don't need to get the minimax of everything, but the minimax up to a point, for example, right? Now, a little bit to add to the discussion is what happens if there, uh, if there are multi-players, right? If there's more than two players, so three players, for example, instead of having one utility, you would use a vector of utility. So this is a utility vector, okay? And then the minimax can be computed exactly as we saw. Um, there are ways to make the minimax algorithm not explore everything. So for example, if we have, um, and, and that's called, uh, one way to do this is via alpha beta pruning, right? So for example, here we're doing the minimax here, right? And we know the minimum here, the minimum between 3, 12, and 8 is 3, right? The minimum 3, 12, and 8 is 3. Now here the minimum, right, it was 2 and something and something, 2, 13 and something else, right? Well, if I'm going to get the minimum there, right? And there's a number 2, right? There's a number 2. And then the minimum here is the minimum between 14, 5, and 2. Now, right here. If I want to get the maximum of these three values, here's an interesting uh, thing to observe. The minimum here is 3. The minimum here is 2, right? And I need the maximum. Now, the minimum here, it's going to be 2 or less, right? But remember, what I want after I compute all this minimum, what I want is a maximum value, right? So let's call this value here z. What I want later is going to be the max of 3, z, and 2, 
right? Now, it doesn't matter what z is, right? Because z is going to be the minimum between 2 and something else. So it's either going to be 2 or less. If z is 2 or less, then the maximum here is going to be 3 anyways. So do we need to compute z? Do we need to explore these two empty nodes? Well, perhaps not. And there's an algorithm that will help you decide when to explore subnodes of a tree and when not to explore subnodes of a tree. Okay, and that's called alpha beta pruning, but that's the object of a different uh, video, a different class.